Welcome to North Georgia Now Today. Today is Thursday, and my favorite co-host on Thursday, Darren Osborne, is back in the house. I have to tell you, he really gave up a lot to be here today. He traveled from North Carolina, drove yourself down. You got down at 4.15 this morning? Yes, ma'am. Got a little sore throat, got a little cold. Um, are you going to get to sing tonight in Rome? I don't know. Um, I've been praying all day, asking the Lord to give me a voice. but um, It's not sounding good. The Lord may be holding out on you. Maybe he thinks you just need to rest. Maybe he thinks you just need to rest. And resting with the inspirations means that instead of singing tenor tonight, you'll be loading the bus, unloading the bus, setting up the equipment. Your voice would be, yeah, you need to sing. <laughs> you need to sing. I do. I'm glad you Appreciate came that. down, though. Thank you for doing this. Glad and, to be uh, here. Folks loved when you were here last time. Loved it. We got a lot of positive emails, and people were glad to get to know you. And that's one reason I think it's important to have you here. Matt, lead singer, obviously. People have gotten to know him over the past 12 years. Melton, he's had eight years running with him. And Archie, of course, everybody knew Archie. But people were a little bit concerned about what is your position. <clears throat> you're not taking Archie's place. Right. You're backing him up. Right. And, and you're doing your own thing. And, and quite often, you close with Beulah Land, don't you? Well, you know, we, Archie does a lot of uh, closing, uh, Amazing Grace. Uh, uh -huh. After 44 years, you've kind of earned uh, the spot of, of being the opener and the closer. Uh -huh. and, and of course, it really doesn't matter. We're, we're singing for the Lord, and, and that's who it's all about. But um, I, I just enjoy being able to uh, travel and, and be with those guys. They're a great uh, group of guys, and, and, and Archie is a, a great person just to even uh, be around and, and learn from. Uh, he's had a lot of experience, and he's a, he's a great teacher, and he, he's helped me quite a bit. And, and I appreciate him. And, and his uh, singing just, is a ministry, isn't it? It is. It, it is. is. It is to him. I mean, that's, mm. that's what y'all are all about. And, yes. and that's why I think that the crowds still are great. I mean, we'll be in Rome tonight at, um, oh, what is it, Rome City Auditorium. Old building, really neat building. But I'm looking forward to that now. Lord, I have been praying for rain. I wish he'd wait till midnight tonight. I hate to drive in rain. And I'm going to have the widow wagon full. I'm taking Mike Hawkins' mom over, and, you know, she's on a walker. Right. That's going to be tough to get her in and out of the rain. But they said we may get two inches of rain tonight. So we need Well, we need the rain. We need it. We need so the rain. I can handle it. I'll just drive slow. I'll just drive slow. So. Be safe. But looking forward to tonight, and I hope you'll be able to sing. And if you're not, that's okay. Maybe by tomorrow night it'll be cleared up. We did get you a little bit of medicine. We're kind of pumping you up. So now we're getting cards and letters, and I love that. I got the sweetest little card from Miss Frankie Jean Dorsey, and she sent me a recipe. And I can tell you, y'all, Heart of the Home is shown here every Wednesday night, every Tuesday morning, every Friday morning, and again Sunday night. And soon you're going to see an amazing German chocolate cake recipe that Miss Frankie Jean Dorsey mailed me. And this is precious, and it's a very simple recipe. And you know that's what I'm all about. It's got to be simple. I've got a house full of kids raised, a um, couple of jobs going on, and it's got to be simple. So thanks, Miss Frankie, and, and you'll get to see that on Heart of the Home soon. Actually, Darren and I are going to go shoot that when we leave here today. And I'm going to have a German chocolate cake that's a simple, simple recipe. Now, this week is FFA week. What does FFA stand for? I wish you wouldn't ask me that. Future we didn't have it. Farmers, Farmers of, of America. America. We didn't have that. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, we had it in, in our area, but as far as I went to a Christian school, and, and Christian there was schools not a lot didn't involvement have that. Of really? FFA, yeah. Well, Pickens County FFA team captured the area livestock win over in uh, Calhoun. And the uh, guys who were on this judging team, Andy Bishop, Allie Pettigrew, Junior Chapman, and Thomas Turcotte. And that's, that's great. They came in uh, first place, and we're proud of them. Progress has this in there. And speaking of the progress, we have um, been looking for businesses who have several generations of one family involved in it. And uh, we know that L. J. Tire Company has, I think, four generations, and r &A Orchards has three. Like Mercier's, they have four. And you know, we want to know if you have a business, um, we have a guy coming on who a fellow in Ball Ground recommended him, their third generation, and I had hoped to have his dad on too, but he's um, suffering from bone cancer. He's gonna be here next week. So we are trying to incorporate your families. Now there's five generations of our family. There's my husband, oldest daughter, grandchild, and granny and ma. And uh, that, that is uh, something else, five generations. But if you have a business that has three generations or more, I want to talk to you. And I want folks to call me. And 
I'm going to be brave enough to give out my cell number one day, but call us at 866-939-2DAY. And, and tell me your story. Um, family business, I, I think it's awesome that you can have several generations working together. And, and you know, you don't have to leave home to work. Stay here at home. So I want to hear from y'all and um, share your stories with me. So now you are pastor of a church in North Carolina. Right. <clears throat> you sing tenor for the inspirations. And travel backup tenor. Back up tenor. And travel a lot. Yes. You travel a lot. And you went home after singing and got this crud from your two little girls, mm -hmm. didn't you? Yeah, we um I got my when I left last weekend, my daughter had gotten sick and and of course we we knew it was a virus and we were trying to let it run its its course and uh she just got worse and worse and um I asked the doctor what to do. He said, Wash your hands, you know, I wanted to keep away from it. Right. But he said, Wash your hands and and make sure that uh, if you, you just continually wash your hands, if you touch her, if you if you help her, if she's coughing, you you washing your hands and, and you stay staying away f uh, f from them. But uh, even my distance, I, I think I'll be fine. I hope but so. um, I, I I asked Lord. I said, you know, I don't want I don't need to be sick. And no. and I I'd stayed away from it for a week. Mm -hmm. And you uh, thought you had it licked. I thought I had it licked and. And it crept up and, and got me. I think uh, when I went to my mom, so my mom had it too. So um, maybe my mom gave it to me. I, I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're if you got there's a lot of sickness going around, the, and so you have to be very careful. Right oh now. yeah, yeah. Uh, If you yeah. if you're sick, stay at home. Uh, right. don't, don't try to get out, and and if you have to, then then do it. But stay at home and 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 make sure you keep your kids home from school and. Uh, maybe we can stop spreading this stuff around. Right. Well, we have a friend who's been in Piedmont Mountainside five days waiting to be transferred to Emory for a bed. He has cancer. And do you know, I got on the phone with Emory yesterday because I thought they were giving us the runaround. They said every bed in every hospital is full because of the flu. So y'all take care, you know, take yeah, care. be careful. Get you some vitamins, drink you some orange juice, and, and, and get to feeling better. Now, I think we've got some obituaries today. We're going to go to that because we have a busy show, and we have in the house Gilmer County Citizen of the Year, Reverend Edmund Miller. And we're going to be joining him shortly, so let's go to their obituaries. And when we come back, we'll check in and see what has Edmund Miller done to deserve this. I think he's done a lot. Hang around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Get your coffee, finish your breakfast, and spend the morning with us. And uh, I want to introduce you, if you don't know him already, Reverend Edmund Miller has just, you were awarded Citizen of the Year of two Gilmer County two weeks ago right. at a ceremony at Appalachian Technical College. Yes. Yes. Were you surprised? Very surprised, Sherry. I had no idea what was going on. I thought Charlie Waters, my brother-in-law, was getting another award, and uh, <laughs> I thought, uh, and I thought you had to be a member of the chamber to be even nominated for uh -huh. Citizen of the Year. So I was quite surprised. Uh -huh. Now, was your daughter down from Knoxville for yes, this? Yes, she was. Mitchie. How did they explain that to you that she came down? I didn't know she was down until okay. we got in the car to go down to the uh, Appalachian. And there she was. And I thought Catherine was driving. I thought Catherine's had her hair dyed. 
So they really My pulled one on you, head. didn't they? <laughs> That's neat. That's yeah. neat. Now, who nominated you? I have no idea, but I appreciate really? those who did nominate me uh -huh. and voted to name me as Citizen of the Year. Well, tell me some of the things you've done to deserve this title. I don't, well, I've pastored churches for 41 years in, in uh, LJ, uh -huh. in Tennessee, in Texas, and uh, recently retired from Mountain Town Church. And uh, I've served in state missions for eight years. And uh, we've been privileged to travel to six continents wow. and share the good news of Jesus. And uh, we, uh, in the churches, we have uh, had programs to try to benefit people. Mm -hmm. If people were in need, we tried to meet those needs, mm -hmm. pay their light bills, help them buy medicine and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a family at church, a, a young man who's 41 and, um, has colon cancer and he's down to yes. the wire and the church has been helping him and and last week he had a choice between make his car payment and pay his medical bills and he chose to buy the medicine he needed and they repossessed his car so the church wow. is stepping in to try to find him something to drive that's great but um, that's uh, it, it's so good to see people come together like yes, that it is. and it takes the whole community working oh, together yes, so yes. now tell me about mission work the continents when you go did you see the young lady who was on yesterday I didn't get grader. to see her yet. Well, she was an eighth grader and she has been to Jamaica and to Mexico. Okay. And and she said, What an impact. What yes. an impact. So it, it changes your life. Literally. That's what she said. We yeah. were privileged to do uh, revivals in Australia and South America and Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've traveled to Mexico and uh, to Germany. We're going to hear from this young lady from Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, Israel and Egypt. Wow. We've been privileged to travel quite a bit. Now, when you do that, is it a week? She stayed for a week. Do you stay a week, 30 days? What do you? We stayed a month in Australia. Goodness. And did revival in two churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, two weeks in uh, Brazil. And uh, two weeks in the Holy Land and, and Egypt. Is Brazil as beautiful as it looks? It's, it's a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. But very poor? Oh, very, very, poverty is just uh, unbelievable. unbelievable. Did you have to use a translator or did? I had to use a translator and uh, it was quite interesting. You had to give a sentence and wait for him to translate it and then give another mm -hmm. and you finally get into a kind of a rhythm and it works out all right. I don't it's know great. Baptist preachers who could do that. <laughs> that would be tough. That well, would be tough. Uh, we kind of practiced before we, uh -huh. when we got there and we met the fellow and he was, he was very fluent in English and uh, very, it's wonderful to work with him. Wow. And you got to have a good translator. Oh, yeah. Like if you're very exciting and, and animated yeah, yeah. and he's yeah. just kind of looking uh -huh. like yeah. that, then uh -huh. yeah. it doesn't do the job effectively. Yeah. Wow. Now, does your wife travel with you when you go on things she like that? She has all of these times, and I want to pay tribute to my wife. She's been my companion and helpmate all these years. And, of course, she's suffering from Parkinson's right now. Wow. And my daughter... Uh, she moved from, we moved from L.J. to Jefferson City, Tennessee to Gainesville, Texas, and she was right there with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, now she, she and her husband live in Knoxville. And after all those moves, did you come back to L.J.? Came back to L.J. Okay. We thought when we graduated from seminary that we were going to uh, overseas as foreign missionaries. But because my daughter was entering college, the foreign mission board will not send couple out because they've had to bring parents back to take care of situations. Mm -hmm. And so we came back and served eight years here in Georgia as state missionaries in LJ and Canton, served five years in Canton in the Etowah Roswell Baptist Associations. Mm -hmm. And what area do you live in now? We live in uh, Tales, uh, Pleasant Grove community. Do you still pastor some? No. Oh, oh yes, I preach some funerals and uh -huh. a few things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you told me your age, and, and you're pretty active for a fellow your age. So. Well, I've been on an exercise program. Now, you can't tell it, but I have been, <laughs> and that helps. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, um, you know, Parkinson's, um, we're going to talk about that in the near future, because I have a dear friend who is suffering from Parkinson's and very debilitating, isn't oh, it? Oh, it, it is. It's, uh, my wife was diagnosed uh, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's a disease that gradually it right. gets worse, right. but uh, she's been a real trooper, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we have great doctors and a lot of good 
new medicines mm -hmm. that, are, that are helping. That, that's one of the things. They, <clears throat> I know they've experimented <clears throat> with Ms. Goldaby's medicine, and she's finally at a balance. So yes. it's, it's very rewarding to see the new things that are coming out. That's right. So, yeah. Now, do you travel now? Do you still do things like that? Do you still no, go abroad? No, no, we don't uh, because of Sue's situation. Of her, we can't yeah, go, yeah, yeah. but we'd like to. Do you only have one child? I have one daughter. Mm -hmm. okay. Put all of her eggs in one basket. Yeah, yeah. She turned yeah. out pretty well. Well, and, and we're gonna we're gonna say this right now on the air. You asked me for a copy of your segment over at Appalachian Tech, yes. and I forgot to ask them That's about that. Right. We're gonna get you one. Thank so you. we'll Mitchell make sure you said that. you wanted your daughter to see that. Yeah, and I'm sorry, like but that. I forgot that. So yeah. we'll we'll see that they get you one because they okay. usually keep copies of that. So okay. now, mm -hmm. um, what does your daughter do? She's a environmentalist chemist. She and her husband are both chemists. He works there at Oak Ridge, and she travels all over the United States. Uh, she goes to where her work is, mm -hmm. and she has to travel all, to different places. Wow. Uh, she travels a lot. Do you have grandchildren? No. No, no I've no, got yeah. a few extra. How many you want? <laughs> <laughs> We might take one or two. <laughs> okay. Darren's got a couple that have got oh, this yeah. old bug. I'm sure he'll share those with you. Rather being citizen of, of, the, of the year, does that get you any perks or rewards? Like, do you get free coffee at no, the restaurant? No, not yet. <laughs> can you make citizens arrest? <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I'd like that. <laughs> yeah. That would be good. As yeah. pastor a few times, I wanted to arrest some folks. Yeah. Well, we, we give preachers <clears throat> a hard time about fried chicken and, you know, yeah. but, but Martin Cook, did you, you didn't see it yesterday, did you? Mm. We were laughing about Martin Cook, the lead of the inspirations. That man can put away more chicken than any Baptist preacher I ever saw. Well, I'm ordained to fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Now, do you know Dr. Fred Craddock? Have you met I him? I haven't met him. Dr. Craig. Oh, well, y'all should spend some man. time together. Yes, Thank you. We'll he, he to is a together. wonderful man, and he's kind of at your age, and he's, you know, he, he's still so active, and it's so good to see y'all doing all the things uh -huh. you do. Now, what do you do today? What is your day like? Well, take care of Sue, uh -huh. and we have a caretaker, Mary Henson, who comes in and helps us, and she's wonderful. And then I've got a doctor's appointment at 11 o'clock, uh -huh. and this afternoon we'll go to get Sue's hair. Uh, style, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's always a plus mm -hmm. for her. Do you week. like to go to gospel singings? Uh, yes, I love gospel singing. I listen to uh, the radio when I'm in my auto uh -huh, or uh -huh. in my pickup. Well, the I inspirations listen. are going to be in Rome tonight. You oh, might I'd take love, a trip I'd like to Rome. To, <laughs> I'd love to go. Uh, I certainly would. Well, that's something. Uh, we talk about their music being a ministry, and yes. there are so many areas of ministry. Oh, yes. You know, it oh, doesn't yes. just have to be from the pulpit. That's there's right. There's so right. many different things you can do. Thank the Lord we've got beyond just the pulpit for right. a ministry. Right, Any Every Christian has a ministry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, that young girl mm -hmm. yesterday just made such an impression on me. She's eighth grade, and, and she just, you know, she said everywhere she goes, she wants to share a story, and I just thought, wow, man, that is fantastic. awesome. Um, I, I <clears> hope <throat> you get to see... Um, what was her name? Uh, Mallory Arp, um, yeah. eighth grade student from Fannin, and a good kid, good kid. I was privileged to speak yesterday at the chapel service for the North Georgia Christian Academy, mm -hmm. and those kids are delightful. Yes, yeah, from and, and you know that's, we, we talk about this at the Inspirations concerts. You look around the room, and there are a lot of blue-haired old ladies. Yeah. We need some young kids getting involved. Exactly in, right. In ministry, in, oh, yeah. in whatever area. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and when I met the little ARP girl, I thought, man, this is great because she had a group of kids who went on these mission trips and they've been mm -hmm. doing it for several years. They raise the money and they that's go right. over and they stay a week. And I thought, you know, that's what it's all about because when the blue haired grannies like me are gone, somebody has got to be out there spreading the word. When so. we went to Brazil, there was 500 of us in the group and we had some teenagers there. and it, and they were utterly amazed at the poverty in oh, Brazil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Utterly amazed. Yeah, and, and kids today really don't. I mean, that's what she was talking about. She said a lot of the girls in her group wanted to go back because they went to an orphanage that had a lot of little babies. Right. And she Changing said, you know, life. they just all, when they left there, they were devastated. Yeah. And it's something that in, in this area, you don't have a clue. You know, no, we've got it we so good, and we're that's so right. lucky. So It will poorest, change your life. The poorest oh, yeah. person in America is very rich to Absolutely. people overseas. You know, yesterday we had a special here on ETC about poverty, and uh, that's one of the things Dr. Craddock talked about. There's so much poverty in this area that we don't know about. That's right. You know, we don't know. There are people who still don't have electricity in this area. And, and there's um, a little uh, lady up in Turtletown that had to turn her phone and her um, cable off because she had a choice of buying her medical. She draws $440 a month. Mm -hmm. You know, who could live on that's that? Right. And, and I said, there's a lot of that around these hills today. That's and it, right. It's pretty sad. So. I, I heard that a lot as pastor. 
Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, a lot of situations are uh -huh. similar. Uh -huh. That's right. Well, I I loved meeting you, and uh, I Thank know you. you've got to go to the doctor now. Where are you going out there? Or are you going locally? Have we got to run you out of here? Doctor Gentry. Okay. Okay. We love her. Yeah. Well. Lady doctor. It was great meeting you, and I am so pleased to Thank get to know you. Thank you for having me on your and program. And I'll be talking to you again because we'll find, uh, we're will find we going to talk about Parkinson's, and maybe we can okay. invite I'd you to come on I'd love to come, to come and talk about Parkinson's. Yeah, I'll because... be praying for you. My grandfather you, had brother. Parkinson's. And... Oh, you are, you know all about it. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. That's you right. certainly That's do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, hang around now. We're going to go to the community calendar, and when we come back, it's almost time to go to Miss Hannah at the news desk. Hang around. We'll be right back. We're back. You know, there's a lot going on in the community, and if you have announcements you need us to make, please get in touch with us at today at North Georgia Now. You know, email it to us, drop a line, call us, and leave the message on the uh, machine, 866-939-TODAY. Today, 2329. That's right. Two, You're three, sounding two, a little bit better. I'm working on it. That's right. Now, Mr. Miller, I want to ask you something yes. else. Relay for Life is coming up soon. Yes. Somebody told me you're a cancer survivor. I am a cancer survivor. What kind of cancer, Jim? Leukemia. Wow. Acute leukemia. Like goodness. I died from it. Oh, the my Lord goodness. delivered me through the prayers of the people. How and, old were you when you had that? Uh, that was in, I was 61 years old. Goodness. And battled it for over a year. Uh -huh. And now I'm in complete remission. That's wonderful. Good. And I praise the Lord. I'll do anything I can to help uh, Relay for Life. Well, Relay for Life will be here live in the studio on March the 8th. 
good. I'd from like to eight come. to four. So maybe you can come and help us man the I'd, phones I'd or maybe give a testimony. I'll do anything I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, my mom had cancer and my husband had cancer. And, and I said, I work really hard to, to make people aware early detection. Yes. And my husband, yes. you know, sometimes men don't go to the doctor like they I should. Know. I know. And, and, and he put off. And, and it's so many times it can be caught early. I was almost a basket case when I got to Georgia Baptist. Wow. And they found the leukemia. And, and what were your symptoms? Uh, just no energy mm -hmm. and uh, just got tired real easy. Thought I just needed a vacation. Really? But uh, then I found out what it was. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and you're fine now. You're fine. I'm doing great. Doing great. Praise and, the Lord. And isn't it something because now if you weren't, who would take care of your wife? Oh, that's right. You know, the Lord knows. Oh, yeah. what he does. Yeah, that's right. He certainly right. does. Well, I said it, it's funny how you find strength, because um, I can't even prick. My, I mean, the sight of blood just about kills me. <laughs> but when my husband was sick, I did things I never thought I could do. That's and right. you know, I look back at it now and think, "Ooh, how did I do that?" Because yeah. I'm one of these. I can't even hardly change a diaper. You know, <laughs> I just. I, mm. And I said, somebody can clear their throat and I get nauseated. So it's, it's amazing where you do find strength. Yes, it is. And there's strength in the Lord. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. This boy sings a song called My Lord's Been Walking, and, and wow. it, is, it, it delivers that message. And um, we had hoped he would sing today, but we ain't going to do that. We ain't going to make y'all think he's taking Mike Holcomb's place with the inspirations <laughs> yes. because today he's a bass singer. So it won't be any of that. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <clears throat> now, remember this. Um, the telethon is on March the 8th. Okay. And try to be here if you can. I will. And we do want to talk to you when we, we're going to get into something about Parkinson's. Is there a support group here for Parkinson's? Not that I'm aware of. We there need to form to be. one. Yes, we need absolutely. To, we need to form a group here. There's an Alzheimer's Parkinson's. support group that meets yes. the third Tuesday uh -huh. here in LJ. That's uh, first double first cousins to Parkinson's. My wife has short-term memory loss. Uh huh. Uh huh. And when did this? Did it come all at one time? Came on gradually, uh -huh. and uh, we went to Emory, and the doctors there diagnosed her uh, with Parkinson's. And Emory has a great department of uh, neurology there that mm -hmm. takes care of the Parkinson's patients. Some of the best doctors. Yeah, and, and is it something, do you do a blood test to find out about Parkinson's? How do you diagnose that? Uh, they do, a, they talk to the patient and uh, have the patient to go through a, a different movements and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that's the main way that they diagnose a patient with Parkinson's, is Parkinson's in early stages. Is it? Is there a heredity? Yes, there is. Okay. And we discovered in her family two people who have had Parkinson's either now or in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, in the coming weeks, we're going to have a lady on. Did you watch us the day a lady played the piano and played us off the air? Did you see that one? No, I missed that. Well, I didn't know her story, but now that I do, I'm bringing her back. She's one of ten sisters, and out of the ten sisters, they have tested four have Alzheimer's. Oh my, so. Their mother died of Alzheimer's. This lady could play the piano at Carnegie Hall, but she can be playing, and all of a sudden, she forgets the song she's playing. Mm -hmm. But I told her, I talked to her yesterday, and she's going to be back on, I think, next Thursday. And, you know, if she doesn't get through the song, she'll just switch songs. And it doesn't matter. But doesn't matter. but I thought, what a, a miracle that at this stage of yes. her life, she's a double breast cancer survivor. My soul. She's still going for chemo. Uh -huh. And she has Alzheimer's. And she's going to play the piano for y'all. And I want you to tune in that day. It'll be next Thursday. Okay, we but will. But there are so many success stories out there. Yes, and so there many is. amazing people. That's right. And it takes this positive attitude. You know, yes. and, and when I called her yesterday to ask her if she would come back, she said, I'm so honored. What about that? And I thought, honored? I thought, I don't know if I can get through this because now that I know her family story, you know, she could just sit down and say, well, I'm going to die of this. I quit. Yes. But she didn't. She didn't. Thank she the didn't. Lord for that. Yeah, 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 that's right. Very positive attitude. And, well, uh, and I think that has a lot to do with many of the things wrong today. It so. does. A merry yeah. heart doeth good like medicine. Oh, that's our favorite <laughs> oh, it does. saying. I've got it hanging all over my house. That was my mother's favorite saying. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And Brother Matt does that every Monday. That's his thing too. So okay. yes, that, that's very true. And and on Friday, Dr. Leo for in Japan, he's going to be on, and he talks about a well heart, and a happy heart, and a and a positive heart, yes. and just you know, um, I think you'll enjoy it makes that. Makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. You be sure and have your wife tune into that I too. I will. So. And a lot of our people at the church at Mountain Town and. At Pleasant Grove, 
watch your program. Thank you and very much. It. Thank you. It, it. It, it is a great opportunity to be able to come into people's homes and to talk about Jesus. You that's know, because right. I guarantee you there's some stations that wouldn't let us. That's right. And I wouldn't be sitting here. So, <laughs> pleasure meeting you. Thank it's you nice so much. It's nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're on very your welcome. Program. Now we're going to go to Miss Hannah Baker at the news desk. Here we go, Miss Hannah. Thanks, Sherry. Hello, everyone. I'm Hannah Baker with your North Georgia Now Today news. The Blue Ridge Community Theater is kicking off their first production of the 2008 season. North Georgia Now's Today reporter Chad Crow attended one of their dress rehearsals, and he joins us to tell us more about it. Well, Hannah, I think the, uh, the theater has really chosen a great script to start off their new season. They chose Lend Me a Tenor by Ken Ledwick. And uh, I did sneak up to Blue Ridge to catch the dress rehearsal this week. And I must say the cast is really having a great time putting on this performance. Um, I did sit down with a, a couple of them to talk about, you know, their upcoming performance. And here's what they had to say. Lend Me a Tenor by Ken Ledwick was his second uh, major Broadway success. It is a comedy farce. Uh, Ken Ludwig is known for writing in the classic farce format, which originated in France, and it is full of lots of mistaken identity, innuendo, and uh, double entendre, and a lot of slapstick uh, humor. Um, it's, um, and it's, he's just a very, very funny writer. Hey, you don't... Uh you don't get it. I'm going to sing now. I'm going to throw up on the soprano. I'm playing Tito Morelli, who is an Italian, world-famous tenor, opera singer, who's come to Cleveland to do a benefit performance for the Cleveland Opera. I'm a Morelli. I don't miss a performance. I play Maria Morelli, who is married to the greatest opera tenor in the world. And um, my take on Maria is that she married very well and she knows it. She's very possessive of her husband and his world. Um, she is long suffering because he is a bit of a dog. <laughs> um, and she knows who she is. And she is, again, very protective of her world, uh, rather colorful. I play the part of uh, Mr. Saunders, Henry Saunders. Henry is the, uh, is the general manager of the Cleveland Grand Opera Company. The, the whole premise is that uh, the Cleveland Grand Opera Company has contracted with Tito Morelli, one of the greatest tenors in the, in the, of our generation, to come and sing a performance of Otello on stage. It's a big boost for the Cleveland Grand Opera Company because it'll really put us on the map and, and Henry is all excited about this. It, it's going to kind of probably make his whole career. And uh, when Tito shows up or doesn't show up and he's late and nobody knows where he is, uh, then Mr. Saunders starts getting very frantic. And uh, of course, I won't get into too much of, of what goes on because it'll spoil a lot of the, uh, a lot of the excitement of, of attending the play and watching it. Uh, the, pl the price of the play is $15. I believe there's a senior's benefit for $13.50. I'd like to invite the viewing audience to come out and see us. We open tomorrow night, which is Friday the 22nd of uh, February, 7.30, and we'll run for four weekends. 7.30 performances Friday and Saturday with uh, 2.30 performances, 2 o'clock performance on Sunday afternoon for four weeks. And we invite you to come see it. And if you enjoy it, we invite you to come see it twice because you will see things the second or third time you come to see it that you did not see the first time, I guarantee. You'll have a good time, and we look forward to seeing you. La, 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 la. Hannah. Where is he? Now, uh, Chad, thanks so much, but how much were those gotcha. tickets again? Those tickets are, you know, they're, they're $15 for, um, you know, the regular admission. Senior citizens do get a discount, however. And don't forget that you can still get their uh, season passes for $50. And uh, if you'd like some more information on tickets and how to get them, you can, can call the box office at 706-632-9223. And uh, what about the viewing age? W would you say this is something for children or for older adults? Well, um, the co-producer, the co-director, excuse me, uh, Michael Lacey, uh, um, he says that he would give the play a rating of PG. He says that you know it, it is a farce, so there is a lot of innuendos and suggestive things, but definitely nothing that would be considered lewd or vulgar. So you just stick with that PG rating. Okay, looks like a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Chad. Mm -hmm. It's back to you, Sherry. <laughs> 
Thanks, guys. Now, that's something else to do in Fannin County. And speaking of Fannin County, we are joined by Yvonne McNeely, who you own the theater in Fannin County, don't you? We do. We you do. do. You and your husband for how many years? For 25 years. Wow, 25 wow. Years. And your daughter, Vanessa, is joining us. And did you grow up in that theater? I did. Did you work there when you were a child? I did, even though I really didn't want to. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and had to clean up all the mess that the people exactly. left. Popcorn yes, and cups. Yes. And oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, it's amazing that that family business has survived 25 years. That's it's, awesome. It's changed, and, and, and things have uh, are slowing down in the theater business mm -hmm. with all the new technology but right we're, we're still there good good for you now I met you um, Christmas didn't I mm -hmm. and and we just kind of I, I loved you instantly so uh, I you. thought that was pretty cool uh, I was a little bit nervous I didn't know many people up there and I'm kind of cruising around Fannin County now trying to meet some folks and, and I've met some nice people and then when um, Lynn Doss told me your daughter was here from Germany mm -hmm. and you're here until when when you go until home? Sunday Sunday short trip now, where in Germany are y'all stationed? Uh, Your husband's in the service. Yes, he's in the army, and uh -huh. we're stationed in Schweinfurt, Germany. It's in the Bavarian state. Beautiful. Yes, oh. yes, absolutely beautiful there. It is. Now, is that near where Elvis was stationed? You know, I'm really not sure. I think I'm it not is. sure. I think it is. <laughs> I think he was in Frankfurt. Okay. I think he was in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. Now, your husband went to Iraq and came back when? Came back in October, okay. first of October. And while your husband mm -hmm. was gone, you got involved in what? Um, I, my background is actually video production. Mm -hmm. So I worked for Charles Stanley Ministries in Atlanta, uh -huh. and I was a production coordinator there. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. And, and wow. what do you do now to occupy your time? Are you involved in something pretty special? Yes, I work for the USO, the United Service Organization. <laughs> Unlike? <laughs> What did you think? UFOs. <laughs> UFO. When Darren has such a bad cold when she said USO, he said UFO. We're going to talk about UFOs. <laughs> no, no, we're talking about USO. Yes. Tell yes. us what that stands for. Uh, it's United Service Organization, and our goal is to be a soldier's home away from home. Right. Mm -hmm. And how many years has this organization been around? It has been around for 60 plus years, I believe. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it as active today as it was during World War II? I believe it's more active because Great. there um, there are USOs around the world. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I know at Atlanta Hartsfield Airport, when you go through the terminal, they have a place for the soldiers to stop and have refreshments right. and a hospitality room. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great. And, and I got to tell you this: and uh, we landed coming in from Anchorage, and guys were being deployed, and they were all standing there. I can't do it. But anyway, the whole Hartsfield mm -hmm. Airport stopped and applauded as these soldiers came through. And I thought, how awesome is that? Because how many times do we hear the negatives? Mm -hmm. How many times do we hear the negatives? And, and I just, you know, best part of my trip was seeing the tribute that was given to those soldiers. That's so wonderful. it was great. Now, what rank is your husband? He is a first lieutenant, so he's an officer. Okay. And he's a platoon leader. Officer and a gentleman. Yes. <laughs> Oh, wow. Now, mm -hmm. does he have to go back to Iraq? Uh, they're scheduled to go back sometime in 2009. Mm -hmm, so. Maybe the war will be over. I hope so. Maybe the war I will be so. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do? What do you do for the USO? Um, our job is to, you know, it's the little things that count. Mm -hmm. So we provide snacks and coffee, and we have a satellite television. Um, internet, make copies for people, uh -huh. um, have a phone they can use to call home for morale calls. Uh -huh. Just the little things that make a difference in somebody's day. Uh, we also do different activities for soldiers. Like this past month, we had a speed dating event, and um, we also had a Valentine's dinner, um, and then we also plan trips for soldiers. And how is the USO funded? It's totally funded by donations. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and you know that's something. It's tax time, mm -hmm. and and everybody's looking for a tax break and something to do, yeah. you know. And, and there are so many people who are fortunate enough to have some extra money. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to, to make a donation. Is there a number or is there um, an address? If you go online, you can go to www.uso.org, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get all the information there. Great, mm -hmm. great. Now. Are you going to stay active in this when your husband comes out of the service? I hope so. I've really enjoyed my time there. Good. You know, and it's great to be able to meet people and, um, you know, form relationships with people that, you know, you otherwise wouldn't have relationships with. Right. Are a lot of the employees of the USO, are they uh, 
either former soldiers or soldiers' wives? Uh, or? Most of them are spouses. And the good thing is, is the USO only has 250 employees worldwide. Otherwise, it's volunteers. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of volunteers. And 250 won't go far. Right. No, That's correct. No. Mm -hmm. well, you get to bring a different perspective to it because your husband is a soldier. And exactly. You know how it important it is when right. he's out on the field, mm -hmm. you know, missing home. Yes. And so you get to make s someone else feel special mm -hmm. by calling home or, or just a, even a cup of coffee is just exactly. real nice sometimes. And we do a lot of baking around our office, so yeah. we always have baked goods for the soldiers. Yeah. Well, well, I'll tell you something that I think is, is awesome. Um, we were in Marietta Diner one day mm -hmm. having lunch, and it's not far from Dobbins Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And um, a group of soldiers were sitting there having lunch, and um, I think they'd just come home. And a gentleman walked over and picked up their check. And I thought, you know, there were eight of them and he picked up their check. So we have done that several times. If we happen to be where a soldier's having a meal, mm -hmm. we just pick up their check. Mm -hmm. And anybody can do that, you know. Um, it doesn't take a, a millionaire, it ju just a little kind gesture. Right. And, and the soldiers were just amazed that, you know, and, and that first time I saw it done, my niece Kayla was with me and we were sitting there having lunch. And when that gentleman did it, I said, Kayla, that's an awesome idea. I said, I would never have thought of that. So there are little things. Right, and that means a lot to that soldier. Oh, yeah. Because it shows them that we do support them. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, I did it at Ruby Tuesdays one day, and, and uh, it's funny, but I didn't know the whole story. The soldier had waited too long for his meal, had a problem with it. I paid for his check, mm -hmm. and they didn't tell him. And I said, do what? And she said, well, we messed up everything, so we just, and I thought, Oh no, you know, because then he didn't know it was a, a gesture of gratitude, right. and I thought, well, that's kind of silly, but, mm -hmm. but there are so you know little things. Mm -hmm. A twenty dollar meal, mm -hmm. no big deal, but it it does mean a lot. So, mm -hmm. now is there is your husband going to be career? Is there a army as far career as we future? know, he says he's going to be in as long as he's happy. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I have a friend whose husband was Air Force career. Mm -hmm. He retired at 38, and then he went on to be a police officer, and now he's retiring from that. So, you know, he can retire. How old is your husband now? He is 28. Okay, mm -hmm. so he could retire by the time he's 48? Uh, 44. 44, mm -hmm. man, 44. that would be awesome. Yes. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> he planned his life better than I did. <laughs> Now, and, and, yeah, better than most people because not my, no, not many mm -hmm. people can retire at 44. Uh -huh. Now, does he want to move up in the ranks? Is that his goal? He does. He's actually um, going to be promoted to captain next month. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's yes. great to be so young. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Now, if you have children while you're traveling, how will that? Well, um, you know. Ever heard of an army brat? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my mother was one. You did? <laughs> I'm one. You know, it changes the dynamic of everything, and uh, you have to plan a little more, I think, right. for something like that. But um, I think the military life is a wonderful life because yeah. you get to see so much right. and do so many things that most people don't get to do. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, how long have y'all been in Germany? We've been there for five months. Now. And how long will you get to stay? We'll be there until at least June of '09. So June next year. Goodness. Mm -hmm. And you said it is beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. It's so different. Uh, before I moved there, I was living in Buckhead. So I now live in a small little village. We have uh -huh. lots of she sheep and um, geese and cows. Do you walk to the places you go there? You do. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Cobblestone streets. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tiny little streets, uh -huh. and uh, you know everybody knows everybody in the little village. Uh -huh. So. And if you do video, mm -hmm. what am I, oh? How could you find a more beautiful <laughs> place to be? Yes. Goodness. It's gorgeous. I take lots of pictures uh -huh. everywhere we go. Uh -huh. well, yeah. Let me ask this question because uh -huh. I think a lot of people that are, that are home watching, uh, you know, the American um, popularity overseas, mm -hmm. how are you received in Germany? How, how do they treat you? Is it, is it you know, welcome, arms, um, you know, hello, and they're friendly to you? Because I think sometimes we, we, rep you know, we see a, a view of where uh, people don't want us in their country, mm -hmm. and I think I think there's a lot of people that do. Yeah, well, I think the Americans have been there so long; they're just used to having us there, and we're just a part of the German culture now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've not had any negative reactions towards me being there. Um, everyone seems really nice. Uh, especially do you live on base? No, we don't. No, okay. no we live out in the economy. So. Now, I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. Have you tried to learn German? I have started to learn German, and it is Good very luck. hard, <laughs> it is. very hard. Um, 
But my boss is actually a German lady, and uh -huh. she'll be speaking with someone in German, and she'll be like, oh, Vanessa can't understand anything that we're saying, and I'll be like, I can understand it. Uh -huh. I can understand it a lot more than I can speak, speak it. it. Mm -hmm. Well, well, my son-in-law is German, mm -hmm. and um, he was, his father was an, he, he was adopted from a German orphanage. And his father was American, and his mother, his adoptive mother, is full German. And and honestly, he now he's been here about 22, 24 years, and he is having a hard time remembering German, even mm -hmm. though he grew up German, he knew German. Mm -hmm. That's all he ever spoke. So it's very strange. But but he said his mother passed away recently and left him books and mm -hmm. recipes, and he was reading them and he was thinking, I'm I'm forgetting some of this. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to you know. And he said it's hard to find somebody to speak German to. Right. He doesn't have any German friends here. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the Woodbridge Inn to talk to Joe Ruford, and he loves being able to speak German because he said you have to kind of keep it polished. Mm -hmm. But my granddaughter, who is half German, he didn't teach her German. And she said, Dad, why didn't you? Mm -hmm. Because now I'm 20 and it's harder to learn. Right, right. And now that they're going back to Germany, she got this mm -hmm. little cassette and she got the little book and she's like, oh, I wish I'd learned this when I was two, you know? <laughs> so I think it is a hard language. Yes, and it's so much easier when you learn when you're young. Uh-huh, yeah. right, right. <laughs> now you said you live off the base. Do we you do. rent a little apartment? Yes, or? we live in what's called a house and there's seven families that live in the house. So there's uh -huh. seven apartments. Wow. And um, there is another American couple in the building, but other than that, everyone's German. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a little tiny village. We're about 20 minutes from the base that um, my husband works at. And it's just a w wonderful little area out there. Wow, yeah. wow. Now, have you learned any German cooking? Um, I've learned a couple of recipes, a really good soup that um, it's like a cabbage soup uh -huh. that is wonderful. Red cabbage or green cabbage? Green cabbage. Green cabbage, mm -hmm. okay. Because mm -hmm. my son-in-law's mom taught him something with purple cabbage and he does it with apples and uh -huh. that's his, um, I think it's New Year's tradition, they do that. And even though his mom passed away, he still does that German mm -hmm. tradition. So, <laughs> Well, you are in an area that is so beautiful yes. and, and, and you mm -hmm. couldn't, kind of like a paid vacation, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you do work in Germany? I do. What mm -hmm. do you do? Oh, I work for the U.S. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and you actually get paid to yes. do that. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, good for you. Yes. Good for you. Now, Mom, let's talk about Relay for mm -hmm. Life. Yes. It's coming up soon. It is. It is. You are a cancer survivor. I am. I am. Doing very well now? I'm doing very well. Good, good, good. And are you going to come and help us with the Relay for Life? I'd, I'd love to do that. I yes. want you to. It'll be yes. March the 8th okay. here in the studio. And, um, you know, the economy is struggling a little bit this year. I think everything, it, it's hard to get people to give because mm -hmm. a lot of people are out of work. So we hope that doesn't hurt us financially as far as what we can. Um, last year we did very, very well. But I think this year it's going to be a struggle. So um, if, if you know anybody who can help up in y'all's area, because Fannin County has, like everywhere else, been hit by the cancer that's bug. Right. So um, we need to raise some money and raise awareness. And I think that's the thing, you know, raise awareness. Because we talked to a friend yesterday who got positive news. He's 44 and was worried about a prostate test he'd had done, but it came back fine. They had given him some bad news and then they reversed it and said the lab had made a mistake. So, uh, whoa, but, but awareness is very important, awareness isn't it? Awareness is very, very important. Now, yes. how old were you when you were diagnosed with cancer? I was uh, 52. 52. Four years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, is it five years? You need a good five-year checkup when things... Not with the type of cancer I have. Okay. With the type of cancer I have, you, are, you can never be considered cured. Really? That's a very, I have a kidney cancer. Okay. And it's um, a diff, very different from most types of cancer. Um, very sneaky mm -hmm. and very difficult to, to detect. What were the symptoms? Um, well, I actually didn't have any symptoms until um, I had probably had the cancer about 18 years. You're kidding. Before I had the cancer. It's a slow growing cancer, but there are very few symptoms. Um, I woke up one morning and I had um, uh, blood in my urine, so I just assumed I had a, a kidney infection. Right. Happens and, to everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought, well, I was getting ready to go on a trip to Mexico, and I, my friend, uh, Lynn Doss, uh -huh. she said, you don't want to get over there and have a, a really bad problem. You, know, oh, you yeah. need to go to the doctor. So um, I just called, and I said, you know, can I just bring a urine sample? Bye. <laughs> Uh -huh. And get a prescription. Right. And um, I don't did. complicate my trip. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly. Yeah. And so um, I went and um, 
they did a culture and they called me back the next day and said, you don't have an infection, you need to see a urologist. And um, I made an appointment, it was about two weeks off, and I thought, well, I've got a kidney stone. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's actually what I expected mm -hmm. to be told was that mm -hmm. I had a kidney stone. And um, um, he went in and I uh, went in the office and he said, well, let's just do an ultrasound. And he just immediately um, said, your kidney is blocked. You need to have a CT scan. So I went directly um, uh, over to the um, imaging and had a CT scan done. And he said, I'll call you in two hours. So he did. He called me in about two hours, and he said, it's cancer. And I you know, was totally shocked. And you had no clue. Absolutely no, no clue whatsoever. No. And I said, OK. Um, I said, um, um, take me about two hours. I could be at the hospital in about two hours. Uh -huh. And he said, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm ready. Let's get this done. That's right. That's right. And so I had about nine days to, to get ready for the surgery. And uh, wow. I had um, lots of tests done in the meantime. And I had my kidney removed. And I had a metastasis, which mm -hmm. means it had spread right. outside the kidney. Right. And uh, fortunately, it was to my gallbladder. Which is what a spare a, part. Yes, I started to say, I threw <laughs> that one away, so I know that. <laughs> you know, no big deal. So I had the, my uh, kidney and my gallbladder removed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, I um, uh, was looking for a um, somebody who really understood kidney cancer. And there are actually no what are called kidney cancer experts in Georgia at all. Because it's uh, rare? Uh, well, about 3% of kidneys that are diagnosed each year are kidney cancer. Uh -huh. But kidney cancer is just so different. And very little money is, is spent on kidney cancer research. Wow. Um, and you can have a wonderful um, oncologist who is very knowledgeable of, uh, of, the, of the more common, say breast cancer, mm -hmm. colon cancer, mm -hmm. prostate cancer. Um, but every cancer is different. There are over a hundred different diseases that are called cancer. That's and everyone is different and re reacts different to mm -hmm. treatment and uh, medications and progresses differently. Mm -hmm. So that's why research is so important. Um, I did see an oncologist in Atlanta and the first thing he told me is I'm not a kidney cancer expert. There's so much new research that there is no way that I can keep up with the latest developments. Mm -hmm. And so his recommendation was that um, I do my own research. And um, never heard that. Th that was a Drive wonderful, through doctrine, huh? <laughs> wonderful piece of advice. Wow! Because he said I cannot keep up with the latest developments mm -hmm. in kidney cancer, and um, to join the uh, American Kidney Cancer Association, he said they will be aware of the very la latest developments, the newest things mm -hmm. and um, see if there is a clinical trial that you could participate in. So that's exactly what I did and I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that I uh, got that piece of advice from him. See my husband was, was, we spent so much time on the internet because he said what's next, what's right. new, what's the hottest thing, there's got to right. be new medication. We just kept searching. Right. We went from Kennestone, Northside, Piedmont, Vanderbilt, you know, I mean, we just, he never stopped because he said, you know, if this guy's not specializing, this guy might, this guy, and we just kept traveling around because he said, if they don't, if it doesn't help me, it will help the next exactly. fellow in line. Exactly. And I thought that was such a great attitude because he knew at this stage he might have a problem, but he also, he would ask every doctor, well, doc, can you learn from this? And they'd say yes. So it's very exactly. important, isn't it? It is. Now in your research, did you find, um, Diet played a big part in? Well, it does right now. I have um, actually, um, I now have cancer in my other kidney. And um, I have um, uh, had surgery, um, a, a fairly new type of surgery called cryoablations, where they go in and they freeze the tumors. And I had four tumors frozen in my remaining kidney um, in October of 06. And I now have at least eight more tumors in my kidney. And so I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing there. And right now, diet does play a big part of it. I'm on a very low sodium, low protein diet. I remember diet. you telling me mm -hmm. that, yeah. Kind of hard to do when you go out to eat a lot. <laughs> right. But um, but it's it's doable. Yeah. It's doable. Well, good for you. And, and now, would a kidney transplant be in the ball? Well, I actually went to talk to a transplant surgeon. I have gone to the, um, in November, I went to the um, 
uh, National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. Mm -hmm. They accepted me to do some genetic studies mm -hmm. um, because it's all, a very small percentage of kidney cancer patients uh, get cancer in both kidneys. And usually, if you do, there's a high chance that it's a genetic mm -hmm. problem. But I don't get any, gen any known genetic profile. So, um, which are good for my kids. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but um, normally you've got to be cancer free at least two years before you qualify for a transplant because the anti-rejection drugs that mm -hmm. you take would make any cancer cells in your body be very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But um, they referred me to a transplant surgeon who had just moved uh, from the National Institute to Atlanta at Emory and he has tried some things kind of outside the box and he has done some living donor transplants um, as soon as six to eight weeks after he removes the kidney wow. as long as you when you checked out head to toe you don't have mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. that, that they can find and has had some good success with that. Well, and, yeah. so. and you have such positive attitude yeah. and, and I know mm -hmm. that that makes a difference. I think I know it does. It does. I, I know it, it does. does. And, and I said, that's what I loved about you when I first met you. I thought, you know, she's not kicked down. She's not sitting there wallowing. She just, okay, what am I going to do next? And, and you were kind of like my husband was. I come in, he'd be on the computer, and I'd say, well, what are we doing now? Right. And, and we actually ordered, um, I don't know what they were, but I paid $1,000 for some stuff out of China because he found it on the Internet, and it kind of looked like, tea leaves or something but it came the week after he passed away oh. but I gave it to a friend who then lived five extra years with the same cancer he had so we don't know if that stuff we ordered from China was any good or mm -hmm. not but you know we tried everything because he was very positive that if he didn't if it didn't work for him it worked for the next exactly. guy so that's, and that's important that's the part of being a part of a, a, a research um, in clinical trials mm -hmm. um, since I've been diagnosed there have been three medications that have been approved uh, for treatment of kidney cancer. So wow. the, the, the new findings are coming quicker and quicker. Uh -huh. and so, so there is hope. Yes, there yes. is. Yes, there that is, is. A, yes, that is a devastating word and I know uh, my cousin when she was six years old, she was, she was diagnosed with leukemia. The gentleman that was on here before had leukemia and everyone that went in with her uh, they they're not alive today, but she you know is married now and yeah. and uh, survivor and so there is hope. It's not a it's yeah. not as devastating as people think if you keep a positive outlook like yeah. you yourself have, have had. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so important and and um, you don't want to ever hear um, you don't want to ever say oh I'll just give it up you know because oh, no 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 that's not the way to go so and I think the relay for life we've had so many positive stories. Just so many positive stories. Did you watch us last year on the Relay for Life? I did. Did you see Kayla, my little niece, dance? Didn't she do the hula to Amazing Grace or something? Because somebody made a two hundred dollars punch. Her mother, let me tell you, her mother was under the desk, dying of embarrassment. But she was sitting next to a lady, Krista, who had, who was battling breast cancer, and and so positive. And Kayla, she just, when we left that night, she said, "Nanny, that lady was so positive." And she said, "Man, what an awesome woman." And I said, "She must have been awesome to make such an impression that you would get up and dance in front of all these people and embarrass." your poor mama to death. <laughs> but she got a $200 pledge and she said, hey, you know, what, whatever it takes to, to bring awareness. And uh, that's very important. So I'm so glad y'all came today. And I'm so glad you were in town. Well, thank you for having us. I think us. it's wonderful. And, and, and remind people, tell them the mm -hmm. website again to get to it USO. It is www.uso.org. That's right, mm -hmm. and, and, and it is funded by donations, donations, and we encourage people to make those mm -hmm. donations. And if you're in Blue Ridge, what's showing at the theater this week? We have Jumper and Spider Week Chronicles. Good. Well, something for the kids to do. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. That's right. And you're located right downtown? Uh, right beside McDonald's at the intersection. Right beside McDonald's. That's mm -hmm. right. I'm, duh, as mm -hmm. you go out to Mercier's, uh -huh. my favorite apple. Oh, <laughs> love those apple pies. <laughs> I'll have to take you up there one day. When you get to feeling better, you can't taste it today. It wouldn't be worth the calories. Right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to the weather. When we come back, we have got one of the progress, the best writers at the Pickens County Progress in the house. <laughs> Jeff, we'll be right back with Jeff Warren in just a minute. Hang around, guys. Thank you so
Now remember folks, this is FFA week. A lot going on in the community and you know those kids need to be supported and FFA is one of those things. They do some fundraisers every year. They do a plant sale in the spring and they do um, have tickets on a truck they always give away every year. We want you to support the local FFA, whether it be Gilmer, Fannin, or Pickens, or Copper Basin. Uh, remember, those kids are out there and deserve our help and our support. And you know, what's the date today? The 21st? 21st. 21st. Well, we've got a happy birthday to Angie Teague on the 22nd. And uh, I want to remind y'all, send me your birthday. Send me your anniversary. Send, you, send me your children's births. We've got a happy birthday for Linda Brady and for Carla Weaver. And Carla Weaver's dad, Ronnie Weaver's going to the singing with us tonight. Did you meet him up at Salem Number 2 the other night? I think I did. Nice gentleman. Nice, nice man. And um, he has... Uh, he came by the shop the other day and we were talking about racing. He has raced down at Dixie Motor Speedway for many years. Good guy, good guy, good family. And, and his granny Grace is going with us. And today, the biggest and best birthday of all is my little buddy, Adele Mercier, is 90 years old today. Happy, happy birthday to you. Heard from Beth Glazebrook um, Watson yesterday, and she called to tell me that it was Miss Adele's birthday, and we want to say happy birthday to you. Keep those apples pumping out. you got to have one. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, we're being joined by Jeff Warren. Have you ever had one of her apple pies? I don't think so. Oh, honey, the best. Is the that right? best. Yes, they're very good. We sell them up at the car show in Jasper, and you've, oh, you have yeah. covered that event. You're always out before I get there. Well, we sell out. We sell out. We usually have 200 each time. And we do sell out, and it's a good fundraiser. That's the thing. The Jasper Merchants Association does that car show. Are we the third Saturday or fourth Saturday night, fourth Saturday of the month? Starting in April, right? Starting in April. Mm -hmm. Starting in April. And the progress will cover that. Well, I'll be there. You'll be there. You'll be there. Now, you've been covering a lot of what's going on in North Georgia. How long have you been with the Progress? I've been on staff since, uh, I guess it was summer of 2004, and I did freelance, freelance. features for them right. a couple years before yeah. that. You did a freelance story about our farm in 2002, and it was called Home is Where the Heart Is. Do you remember that? Uh, that was uh, interviewing your mother-in-law? Me and my mother-in-law uh -huh. and the farm. Yeah, That's right. I remember that. That's Her right. tomato patch, I think, That's featured right. big in that. That's yeah. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and, and at 93, I can tell you she still has tomatoes. She'll still plant a few cabbage. She's 93 years old. But she takes her little walker and her little pail and her little hoe, and she goes out behind her house, and she has a little patch where she's still... That's our little farming, you know. Uh -huh. That's our little farming. So, yeah. you're writing stories about everything now because the area is changing, isn't it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Changing a lot. And I understand you got inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame when Jeremy Mullinax taught you about racing. Yeah, I didn't know a thing about <laughs> racing until Jeremy had to fill me in. He did. Fact. Yeah. He told me that the other day. <clears throat> he said, you know, that feller never has been to a race. <laughs> And I said, I know, Jeremy. I said, he's led a sheltered life. You've been, now, you live in racing country, don't you? I live right near Lowe's Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina. Right. So, And you live near some of the best engine builders in the world. Oh, yeah. In fact, my neighbor uh, is an engine builder uh, for Joe Gibbs Racing. Right. So uh, every once in a while, I have him come over and check my car out. and uh, he's, he's a good guy to be around. Yeah, There's a, yeah. lot of good, a lot of good in racing mm -hmm. and a lot of good people in racing. That's right. That's and right. so uh, even though... Even though every, everything has its bad, but there's a lot right, of good. Right. Well, I told Jeff today we're going to have a couple more guys on, Casey Roderick and Matt Hawkins, and I want you to do a story about them because these young men have really been putting it to it, and, and Matt has moved up to ARCA racing now, hmm. which is very expensive, and Jeremy talked about that on the show the other day. It cost about a million dollars a year to do ARCA racing. Good. So when you do a story about Matt, you'll really learn. And his dad is the driving force behind him because somebody has to be there to do the sponsorships and somebody has to help you and somebody has to promote you. And Matt's a very good driver. Uh -huh. And uh, Casey Roderick is the best and uh, still looking for a sponsor. So I think you'll enjoy meeting those young men. Yeah. And uh, you can do a good story about that. And then two or three more stories and you'll be an expert on racing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe, maybe so. so. Now, what are you writing about this week? What would you do? Well, I've got notes sitting there uh, for uh, about a recycling business in uh -huh. uh, Pickens County. Uh, he's been he's been uh, in business about three years, and he's he's trying to uh, to establish a relationship in cooperation with the county uh -huh. to uh, to uh, 
basically to collect recyclables and, and make that more of a big deal for Pickens County. There's, he said there's a state initiative that's been, been out for some time trying to reduce the total uh, solid waste that counties generate by about 25 percent and he thinks that he can do that if he ever gets the chance. He's a young man, it's a fairly new company and he's, he's hoping that he can eventually get the county to have enough confidence in him to trust him with that. Mm -hmm. and, well, you haven't been in Jasper long enough to know, but you know what the Royston Corporation is in Jasper, don't you? Used to be Pickroy or something yes. like that? Yes. <clears throat> Do you know what that used to be? No. The county landfill. Oh, really? Do you know how many tons of garbage are right there? No, ma'am. You could, I mean, it was a huge landfill. Mm -hmm. A huge landfill. And have you ever been to the Royston plant? I've never been in there. Drive into their facility and look at the view of the mountains, the most beautiful view you have ever seen in your life. And, and we used to laugh about, well, if you want to see the mountains, just go to the dump. But that's where <laughs> the dump used to be. Uh -huh. and, and I don't know how many acres it is, but it's a huge facility. And that's where Pickens County Landfill used to be. And, and I can tell you that was before anybody recycled anything. Mm -hmm. Now, my daughter is the can patrol at my office. And, and she will look at us and give us those bad looks if we put a can in the garbage. She's over there grabbing it out and rinsing it out, you know, and, and she's the can patrol. So, but it uh, takes a lot of effort to recycle a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm afraid it does. And it's, it's more expensive than you might think in, in uh -huh. terms of uh, one of the things that this young man is trying to do right now is, is get the schools on board. Uh -huh. It takes about $5,000 just to come up with all the containers that you have, that you need to to put on a campus because each classroom is supposed to have two, I think one for soft drink bottles, one for paper products, and then you've got them out in the hallways too. Mm -hmm. And it's a special type of container. It doesn't look like it'd be very expensive, but I guess if you get enough of them, it is pretty hmm. expensive. Well, you know, and, and can you imagine, I never thought about that. Do you know how much trash a school throws away every day? When you think you about paper imagine? alone, it's a bunch. Oh yeah, because milk cartons, you uh -huh. know, the milk right. cartons, and, and do they eat off paper plates or do they use the, they still wash dishes, don't they? I, I do those so. trays, when I, was, when I was growing up, they had those trays with the different compartments. Different compartments yeah. in it, that's right. Oh, well, well. There, there is a lot of waste, and uh, uh, cans, plastic, batteries, some, what are some of the other things this young man recycles? Let's see, uh, it's some of it's industrial type stuff like shrink wrap, uh -huh. diff different kinds of plastics, uh, cardboard's a huge thing, and uh, and sort of the plus of the thing is that uh, you can establish a contract or relationship with his company, and it's actually cheaper than just paying somebody to come and and pick up your garbage. You have to you know separate, separate some of your stuff a little bit, but it's not a big deal to do that, uh -huh. and. Uh, he said there's one company, it's a convenience store like on Main Street in Jasper, and uh, he's built a bin for them to collect their cardboard. And even with them having to pay his company to come and, and get the cardboard and tote it off, mm -hmm. it's, it's still less expensive than the extra dumpings of a dumpster it would take if they were just throwing their cardboard in mm -hmm. the dumpster. Well, you know, Thomas Wilkie is one of the pioneers in recycling cardboard because I can remember forever, even when the Blue Star was uptown, and you don't remember that. You're, you're not as old as I am. You haven't been around as long as I am. But, but I can remember he always had a truck there, and they always their cardboard boxes have always been recycled. And that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I don't know where he has to take it, because I'm sure at the, at the time he was doing it, there was nobody locally doing that. So he had to haul it somewhere. Uh -huh. I'm not sure where this fella is taking him. He's actually established a warehouse, and he's got a baler where he can bail up things like cardboard, mm -hmm. plastic, that kind of thing. And and uh, so it's not such a huge volume that you, you can't you know, take care of it. Mm -hmm. He was taking all of his stuff to the county recycling center, not for any kind of, uh, you know, compensation or anything, mm -hmm. but just, you know, toward the effort exactly. of recycling. Now that he's handling it himself at a warehouse, he said the county is beginning to see, you know, that what they're getting at the recycling center is falling off a little bit because his company is handling so much. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the hardest things to recycle and one of the biggest things are the um, Tide, Gain, Cheer, you know, your, your laundry detergent. Those containers are big and, and you have to get rid of them some way and surely they can be melted back down. That's a plastic container, uh -huh. a liquid right. type thing? Right, right. They're heavy and they're sturdy and they're, they're, I think they're even heavier and sturdier than a milk jug. Yeah. And that's something that it, it's a tough thing. It takes up a lot of space in your garbage. 
You know, yeah. if you put two of those in the trash, you've got a trash bag full. Hard so. to crush one of those, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do they do with those? Melt them down? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm just a reporter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what else are you working on? What are you doing stories on? Well, let's see. Let me think about some of the ones I have been doing. Uh, oh, I just in interviewed uh, Junior Chapman. You mentioned him, the yes, FFA. FFA. No, he's the state FFA president. Good that, that's, kid. That's for all of Georgia folks. That's right. Yeah. Good kid. Yeah. Good kid. He's just back from Spain. He, he went over there with a bunch of other state officers from all across the United States. Now, can you imagine a southern redneck accent with a Spanish interpreter? Don't talk about Junior like that. <laughs> I love him. I love him. But can you imagine an interpreter going, huh? <laughs> That's funny. You know, FFA amazes me. Our, our grandson was in it for years, and he loved it. He loved it. And he's very, he's a little bit bashful. And it brought out something in him that it, I was amazed. It, it totally changed him. Because they do travel, and they deal with people everywhere. Well, I, I interviewed uh, Junior once, I guess about a year ago, when he was elected to president. And mm -hmm. he was telling me, it, you know, the same kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that the first time he ran for office, I think just locally in the FFA, he said, I, took, I talked about 20 people, and I was just, you know, pa practically petrified. Uh -huh. He said, but, but then I got to doing it. I got to making intro introductions of people at, uh, at FFA meetings, and it, it comes natural to him now. And uh, he memorizes his speeches, <gasps> and he's preparing wow. a speech now. He gives a farewell speech. At the end of his term is at the big convention in April, and he has uh -huh. to give a farewell address. And uh, his theme is going to be dream big. Uh -huh. now, That's what a got, good theme. What got you interested in reporting? Was you a little boy spying on your sister or... <laughs> Uh, well, I, I didn't have a sister. I'd, I'd probably done that if I had, but <laughs> uh, I think uh, probably several different things. I've, I've always been interested in English, you know, just in language. I've started working with the Tater Patch players who do this uh, like a poetry recital now. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm basically a word nerd. I think anybody that's a writer is, is uh -huh. kind of like that. But the feature writing part of it is I enjoy meeting people and, and finding out about people and uh, I really feel like there's, there's kind of, there's drama and heroism in, in every person that you meet if you sit down and listen to them and hear them tell their story mm -hmm. and kind of capture that drama and, and that interest in any human life. Every, everybody can teach you something just about oh, different yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Now is it easy? I know uh, the well, job that I have as, as I pastor and sing. And, and, and there's a lot of people that think that's easy. Yeah. And you know, oh, that's, you got an easy job uh, pastoring a church. You got an easy job singing. And it's not as easy as everybody thinks. You can't just, you know, get up on Sunday morning and, and, and speak. You have, there's a lot of study and preparation. And there's a lot of uh, counseling. There's a lot of, uh, you know, dealing with people and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. And so you have to um, uh, prepare. Right. Now, when you're writing, People would think, oh, it's just so easy to sit down and write, but there's a lot of preparation involved, correct? Well, yeah, and I, and I think if you think about it, uh, most people would probably rather take a beating than write another term paper. Oh, my and, soul. And that's and that's kind of what it. it's like. No, I don't love it. I don't love it. I, I love the other parts of it, but that, the writing part of it can be tedious, and it's solitary. You kind of got to climb inside your own head and organize your thoughts and, you know, and then come out again when you get through. But, uh, but I think... You know, when people respond to it, you know, the, the feedback you get from readers occasionally, you only get that once in a while, but it's a, it's a real perk when you get that. And, and just the meeting of the people, I really enjoy. Now, That's where good. were you educated? Well, I, I went to college at Mercer University, Atlanta, uh, when they still had an undergraduate school there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not there anymore. Now, if you go there, you can get an MBA or you can study to become a pharmacist or something. But... At the time I was there, you could study uh, broadcast journalism, which is actually what I studied. I didn't study uh, print journalism, but uh -huh. I think I had one journalism course when I was there and uh, one photography course. I thought I was going to be in TV. Uh -huh. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, do you travel? Always one. Did, when you first started writing, did you travel around looking for stories? Did you just land somewhere and stay there? What? How did you end up in Jasper? Well, um, at the time I came here, I was newly married, and my wife came here. She was a middle school counselor, brave soul, and uh, uh -huh. she came here to work for the Pickens County uh, Board of Education. Uh -huh. She worked in the middle school here, and I followed her here, and okay. I needed a job, and that's when I began freelancing for the paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Do you ever think about writing a book? No, and the biggest reason I don't think about that is I want people to read what I write. Uh -oh. and, and that's, you kind of, you don't have a guarantee of that working for the newspaper, but at least it's out there every week and, uh -huh. and you can feel like some of the people who buy the paper maybe are reading it. Usually my stuff's hit out on the inside, so I'm, I'm never completely confident of that, but uh, you hope that somebody's reading it. But right. I think people look for your stories, I really do, because I've talked to people who said I enjoyed that and, and that was a neat insight, he, you know, and I thought that was pretty interesting. That's why I invited you to be on, because I'd heard some positive things about you. Well, I appreciate it, I appreciate it a lot. Now, what's the most unique story that you've ever put together and written? I, I don't know about the most unique one, but the ones that really turn me on are, are usually um, when I'm interviewing an old World War II veteran and I've, I've interviewed more than one, and they usually have interesting stories to tell. Mm -hmm. um, one man was a pilot. He lives down in Nelson, Georgia, right at the Cherokee Line. And uh, he, he piloted that uh, P-38 twin fuselage uh, single engine fighter in World War II and was shot down in a dogfight with several German fighters and wound up in a POW camp. And when I interviewed him about three years ago, he had such an amazing memory, just sharp as a tack, and he could give me the, the details of that story. I sat with him in his war room. He has sort of a war room in his house where he has all his old records and models of airplanes hanging from the ceiling. And I sat there two hours just taking down notes, and I knew I could never use them all in the story, but it was just so interesting to me, and I wanted to record it. You know, there's a, it's sort of my dream fantasy that 100 years from now, if if Jesus waits that long to come back and the world's Don't still around, yeah, or if Hillary gets elected, we might not. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I'm thinking that if the world is still here 100 years from now, I'm hoping somebody's going to go into the library, you know, looking for maybe some of their ancestors. You know, all the progress goes on, on microfilm. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they'll get in there and some feature that I did about somebody is going to be their great, great, great granddaddy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're going to say, wow, and there's this picture, too. Mm -hmm. And who is this guy, Jeff Warren? Well, you know, I don't have any kids, so there ain't going to be anybody looking for me. Mm -hmm. But maybe they'll say, well, he was an all right guy. Look, he wrote about granddaddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, is this gentleman still with us? Yes, ma'am, he is. Um, How's he doing? Still? I contacted him about, I guess it's about half a year ago. I heard that uh, Georgia Public Television was doing an oral history on uh, World War II veterans, and I mm -hmm. thought, well, man, what a great interview that would be. But when I contacted him, he told me that he felt like his mind was slipping some, oh. and that he was afraid he would be embarrassed, you know, on camera like that. And uh, I thought it was such a shame because of the stories that he has to tell. So has he ever been recorded on camera? I, I don't know that he has. Wow, that's a shame. You know, yeah. that's why the Words of Wisdom segments are uh -huh. so important to me because did you see the gentleman yesterday? He's 99 years old. I know him. In fact, I'm in Is his Sunday precious? school class. Is he precious? <laughs> Well, my goodness, he's so smart. Uh -huh. He's so smart, and he remembers everything. Yeah, the teacher in Sunday school calls him the professor, uh -huh. and uh, he insists on using the King James Bible, which is... Uh -huh sort of a point of contention in the class, I think. Oh, how funny. Yeah. Well, he is precious, and, and, and he was funny when he was telling me about what he had for breakfast, and uh, he said, and I only got one cup of coffee, and I said, well, Mr. Jesse, would you like another cup? No, I'll just wait till I leave here. I said, okay, and when I invited him to be back here for his 100th birthday, I said, now, you're going to be here, aren't you? He said, yeah, are you? I said, yes, sir, I hope to. <laughs> He's very smart, very witty, very witty. He's a fine fellow. He is a fine fella. And uh, he told us that he had a relative that lived to be 106. Oh, really? I yes. didn't know that. Yes, he did. He told us that yesterday. So he may be around in your Sunday school classroom. Longer than me, years. I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's something else. And he was a chemist. He was yeah. a chemist, yeah. yeah has a lot of things in that mind of his. But uh, it, it, is, it is sad to see, we, we talked about Dr. Tom Boswell, he's gone. Did you know him? No, but I talked to his wife. I, I did a little story Precious on him, a, a, ah. about him, and, and found out he, had, he served uh, on the island of Tinian. Absolutely. And uh, on a B-29. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and one of the proudest moments of his life was when he was doing that. You know, oh, he loved yeah. being a doctor, but 
but there are so many stories out there and I think that's why it's important you know if folks don't want to come on camera it would be great if they would contact you and you could do a story in print about them that wouldn't intimidate them right. like being on TV does. Some people, some people get a little intimidated by it, and and that's okay. I understand that, but it would be great if they could contact you and you could do a story about well, it. Well, I'd love to do that. Yeah, I'd yeah. Tell it. us how people can reach Jeff Warren. Well, at the Pickens County Progress, which is right on Main Street, 94, uh, I think it's 94 North Main Street, we're right uh, next door to the courthouse. And uh, but the easiest way is probably by telephone. That's 706 253 two four five seven you know, speaking of the progress, they're fourth generation, and, and I hope that generation businesses will contact me because we want to do stories about them. Have you ever done a story about Miss Martha Edgepool? Well, I did interview her. You know, they celebrated 100 years of family ownership of that right. paper, uh, I guess it's last year. Uh -huh. And uh, I interviewed her then, and she told me a lot about her husband, who I didn't know that much about John Robert. before that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. And her dad, what was her dad's name? Uh, that's uh, Mr. Edge, Robert Edge. Robert Edge. Uh -huh. And the Progress is still located in the Edge building. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, did her dad do anything besides the newspaper? Is that all he ever did? Well, he... Uh, he was, I guess you'd say, a land trader all over the county. And uh, the other thing I know about him is that he served in World War I. I have, in fact, I have a box of his letters that uh, his, his other daughter uh, gave me, wow. Miss Bobby Edge. His letters home to his mother and his brother while he was in France during World War I Goodness. as a bugler. He was a bugler. You know, this is right before they had, you know, they brought radio onto, uh -huh. the, onto the battlefield. And so he had to blow uh, bugle signals so the the soldiers would know when to do what. Goodness. So, well, that was interesting. Now, did you do a story about that after you got these letters? Uh, no, I'm just translating them or transcribing them, I guess uh -huh. you'd say. And uh -huh. Miss um, Bobby Edge has an idea of publishing them as a book, I think. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, I need to get busy on that. I've had them a long time and hadn't hadn't been doing much on that well, in a while. Well, we, we so. need to initiate you to do that. Now. <laughs> right. We'll challenge you. Get that done so we can read it. That would be great. Uh, um, do you watch Russell Hood's segment here about the soldiers? Uh, I, I think those I've seen served, one of those. Oh, uh -huh. now, now that is such an awesome way for these gentlemen to get together. Uh -huh. And like your little man from Nelson, I wish that he could be involved in that because mm -hmm. even though their mind's slipping a little bit, it doesn't matter. We understand that. You know, I'm 57, my mind is slipping sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what Folks that is. Folks understand that, don't they, little <laughs> young man? <laughs> yeah. I got tickled last night. I, I went to pay for some stuff at the store here in uh, Gilmer County, and I handed my money and she said, with your senior citizen discount, you saved. And I thought, I'm not old enough to be, and then I thought, oh, yes, I am too. <laughs> well, I take advantage of that. I, uh, I'm not uh, eligible for AARP, but I've had this gray hair for a while. And, uh -huh. and I've been some getting some free coffee and stuff. Yeah, 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 and I yeah. just let it roll on. Yeah. Now, what is in your future? Are you going to stay with the progress? That's my plan for now. Good for you. I hope I hope they feel that way. Yeah, I, I think I think folks locally have taken to you. I think they enjoy seeing your stories, and I think they look forward to it. And I think it's a disappointing week when you don't have a story in there. So, well, I appreciate you know. that. Now, have you interviewed Joe Rufert? Uh, yeah, I think uh, when they celebrated the 25th mm -hmm. anniversary of the restaurant, which is, that was when I was freelancing. That's been a while. Yeah. Kayla yeah. had to go out and do a story about him for... Um, I think it had to do with uh, a legal alien who worked in the country and was over 65, and that was, and, and she did it. And when we left there, she was teary-eyed and, and all upset because she said, you know, he has such a story. And there are so many people out there who have such a story. You uh -huh. know, just, it's amazing. And uh, if, you, if you know Joe, he's a cut-up and he's a clown, and he, but he has a deep, dark, a um, lot of history there. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. It would be good if um, he had a book or something that told his life story because he was there during Nazi Germany. Uh -huh. Tough time, tough time. Yeah, he told me his dad, I think, was not a Nazi, but he, he was a veterinarian for the German army during World uh -huh. War II. And I think that Joe was born right toward the end of the war. Right. Uh, but he himself, he was a guard, I think, on that Berlin Wall uh, in East Germany and laid down his rifle one day and came across. Mm -hmm. But that's all he would tell me about it. The day I was there, I wanted to hear about it's that, but he hard. said, this interview is going to be about the restaurant. Mm -hmm. and, right. uh, and I well, never Kayla's got to hear Kayla's interview all was more of a personal thing, and uh -huh. I hope you'll get to read it, because she did, um, 
think she had to do an essay, and it's it's pretty long one, and, and you'll enjoy that. But it was one of those things. She just thought, I'm going to go talk to funny Joe Ruford, you uh -huh. know, because he's just kind of a comic. And and when we left, she said, oh, there's a lot of deep story there. Mm -hmm. So a um, lot of deep stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need to search these hills. Dr. Craddock is somebody you could go meet and talk to up here that you haven't gotten an interview. He's an older man who was a poor, poor, dirt, dirt poor Tennessee farmer who went to Emory, graduated smart man, got a doctorate, da 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 da, da and is now back in this area helping people. Wow. So um, a hmm. lot of stories in these hills. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can progress up this way a little bit, you know. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Now, when you, um, how do you choose your stories? Do people call you? That, that happens some of the time. Sometimes uh, the editor has an idea he'll put me on to, and, and sometimes it's, it's just an idea that comes up or something that'll hit you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a history nut, so a lot of the times it's it's something based in local history that mm -hmm. piques my interest. Mm -hmm. There's there's one that's kind of been on the back burner a long time about Covington Hang, which uh, has a Civil War connection with the county, kind of uh -huh. unique here with the Home Guard and all that business. Uh -huh. And uh, and also something working now on a. Uh, on an old railroad that used to go from ball ground up to Marble Hill, kind of the back way. Hmm. It's, uh, it's gone now, but there are traces of it still there. And uh, I've got- Like through Smoky Holler that way? Well, it, not exactly through Smoky Holler, but it's uh, kind of closer to Four Mile Church and up uh -huh. through there. It kind of wow. meandered, crossed a bunch of uh, creeks. And I think the deal was they couldn't come in through the Georgia Marbles Railroad because uh -huh. they were a competing quarry. So they had to build this impossible railroad with just uh, several trestles along it. It's sort of a torturous thing through mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the trestles actually fell down in 1904 and killed two of the men on the train. Oh, goodness. So you're working on a story on that? Yeah. Well, get it done. I, get her done. Get her done. Uh, get her done. All right. <laughs> Get her done. All right. Well, you know I love you, and I love reading your work, and I, and I think the progress has done very well in keeping yeah. you. I think when that freelance went to full time, they made a good decision. Don't you think so? Oh well, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I think they did. I think they did. Now uh, you live in a small town. Do you have a local newspaper? <coughs> uh, we do, uh, Kernersville News, and uh, we they they send it out, and and. And I enjoy reading it. You know, it, it does the local ball teams and uh -huh. it does uh, local stories and keeps up with the aldermen and, and, and all that. And it's, I, I enjoy reading the paper. Um, I, I enjoy USA Today. I enjoy the uh, Winston-Salem Journal. But I enjoy more of a small town paper. The local. Yeah. yeah, that deals with, with the citizens in, in your area. Um, I mean, if, you're, if your child plays ball and, and the local paper uh, runs a story, that's great. You know, uh -huh. your kid's in the newspaper, and, that, and that's a great thing. So I enjoy the local newspaper, and I enjoy history, too. I, uh -huh. I, I love history. I love Civil War history and, and, and World War I you know, and World War II history. And uh, There was a gentleman in our church in McDonough, Georgia, and uh, he was on uh, one of the, the battleships there in the Pacific, and he has a story to tell. Uh, they got caught in a crossfire between friendly fire oh, and good. the Japanese. And, uh, you know, those stories, I just love sitting there eating them up uh -huh. because that's, uh -huh. <coughs> they were real men. Uh -huh. And and I, I think a lot of soldiers, you know, uh, There are a lot of, of soldier it. stories that need to be told and you need to capture them. Right now, Miss Hannah Baker is about to capture us because we're going to the news desk. Let's see what Miss Hannah's got going on. Thanks, Sherry. Grass tetany is a term familiar to those who own cattle, but is sometimes overlooked at the season's change. North Georgia Now's Jennifer Poole visited a local farm to find out what precautions cattle farmers need to take in order to avoid this serious and often fatal disorder. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> These cows are healthy, thanks to their owners. Unfortunately, some local cattle have already been lost this year due to grass tetany. Grass tetany is one of those silent killers that affects all of our cattlemen in the North Georgia area. It's a magnesium deficiency that takes place in the blood of the animal, and it's due to just cool weather and grass growing and having doing what it should. But what happens is that the plants have ability to pull up more potassium than magnesium, and therefore causing a little imbalance of those elements inside the cow's bloodstream. 
Jasper says that when the disease becomes severe, cows can die within four to six hours. Symptoms of grass tetany include nervousness, lack of coordination, and muscular spasms. If you notice any of these symptoms, you should call a veterinarian immediately. However, the easiest way to avoid this problem is through mineral supplementation. As anyone that's grown up in agriculture knows, mineral supplementation is very important, but it seems to be for some reason something we forget about. You know, we're the keeper of these animals in pastures and they can't roam around and eat what they want to. So we've got to make sure we provide the right nutrition at the right time for them. There are a variety of mineral supplements for cattle. However, during the fall and early spring, cattle should receive a good magnesium-based mineral mix. You know, when we talk about mineral supplementation in the winter, we're specifically talking about using high mag salt. That's high in magnesium. And these are, this is just an example of some of it. You know, we like loose salt because cows seem to can take it up easier. The uh, magnesium salt, if you've ever smelled of it, you know, if you're not a farmer, it might be interesting to you, is always mixed with molasses. It's mixed with cottonseed meal, corn, or whatever to get the cows to eat it because, I mean, I've never tried this stuff, but magnesium tastes bad. Cows don't like eating it. So uh, they put a lot of carriers in it to make sure that your cows will eat the right amount. In areas like North Georgia where tetany frequently occurs, supplementation will help to increase blood magnesium levels and alleviate much of the grass tetany problem. Farmers must also provide the right amount of minerals for their cows. We figured it's about four ounces per head per day. So you're gonna have to do a little simple math to make sure that they're eating the right amount. Not only do you need to make sure your cattle are eating the right amount, they must also have enough feeders. About one feeder for every 10 to 15 head of cattle. This is one of the homemade feeders out here at the Dillbeck Farm. Made out of a 55 gallon drum. It's got a hole in the bottom for it so the rainwater will dribble out. You, know, you can buy these things pre-made. The, uh, we found that the stainless steel ones, though they are very expensive, work real well. And these plastic ones work real well. Lastly, Jaspers has a good tip on when to end the high mag mineral supplements. Keep it out until the fescue makes a seed head is a good rule of thumb. Yes, here it's usually 1st of May. There's no real reason to keep it out year round because that's just an added additional cost to you, the cattleman. Reporting for North Georgia Now Today, I'm Jennifer Poole. Thanks, Jennifer. If you would like more information on grass tetany or other agricultural topics, you can contact your local county extension agency. Well, that's all the news for now. We will see you on tomorrow's show at the top of every hour. Until then, I'm Hannah Baker. Back to you, Sherry. Thanks, Miss Hannah. You know, cattle, yesterday at Harris Farm, Nick and Michael loaded up cows and Joey took them to market because not bringing much, it's costing a lot to feed them. Uh, a lot of issues right now with farmers and, and uh, prayers go out to the farmers because yep. if we don't keep some rain this year, hay prices are going to go out the roof. So that's tough. That's another story you can write. Cattle prices are down, hay prices are up, and the water's low. But we're going to get about two inches of rain tonight. Hey. So hey. there's your story, Jeff Warren. Tell folks again how to get in touch with you. Okay. I'm Jeff Warren, and you can reach me at the Pickens County Progress newspaper office. That's at 94 North Main Street in Jasper. Or call me on the phone at 706-253-2457. Or if you want to contact me by email, I'm at jwarren at pickensprogress.com. Right. And that J Warren, that's just the letter J. And we want to encourage people, especially if you have stories about older folks, because you're kind of like me. We like those older folks. That's and right. uh, it, good stories and, and good memories and things that need to be documented. So thank you so much for being here today. And, and go back to the progress, write us something really good. We're going to take a break now and go to the sports. And when we come back, Dave Garner's in the house. We're going to talk about his new live show. Hang around. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Well, Dave Garner's in the house, and hey, we are extending live TV. North Georgia Now today is live. Dave's going to have a new live program beginning today. Today at 11 o'clock. Uh, for, for the folks that are watching in the morning, I encourage everyone to tune on in there. The uh, Prep Rally Live uh, premiering today, and of course, it'll replay at 8 p.m. Uh, each week as well there. So we're following you guys uh, by a half hour in the uh, morning and then coming right on the heels of this show in the uh, evenings mm -hmm. there on the replay. So yeah, we're excited about it. And, and, and we know live TV occasionally there's a little blurt that's life that's that, life and that's what makes right. it interesting right. you know and we're expecting a lot of those uh, actually uh, <laughs> in this show but you know we're gonna have the element a lot like what you guys are doing here you know we like this concept so we want to try to translate it over to the sports world as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and uh, so we're gonna have the element of live call-in we're gonna have uh, in-studio guests we're gonna have highlights and analysis and mm -hmm. some opinion here and there you know and, and we're gonna also have some trivia and some contest and things that we do and, and we'll begin to introduce a lot of those segments uh, as we go on but uh, each and every week on Thursday Thursdays, 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. And Thursdays only. Thursdays, Thursdays only, right, only. Now, okay. right now. As we prepare, because the weekends are usually big on sports, right? right. So that's what you'll be focusing on. Are you going right. to highlight maybe some athletes? athletes are you going to do that sure absolutely whatever's going on whether it be soccer or football right or and that, that's going to be the primary focus as it always has been is, is focusing on our student athletes first uh -huh. and foremost but we're also going to have the element of talking collegiate and pro sports as well because we understand you know we got a lot of georgia bulldog fans oh, out yeah. there a lot, oh, of, a lot of braves yes. fans oh, you yeah. know we got oh, we got yeah. a lot of different folks that are interested in a lot of different things and so we feel like uh, you know having the flexibility to open it up beyond high school sports uh -huh. um, which again is our number one focus but but to be able to talk about other things as well is uh -huh. really going to try to hopefully bring the uh, sports community together along our uh, along our local area. And I, I really do hope that you will incorporate the NASCAR aspect because Absolutely. we've got the Elliots. We're talking to Dan Al Elliott. He's going to come right. and be on. We are just trying to get um, everything because sports are motocross, bicycle racing, right. you know, motocross racing the motorcycles sure. go-karts there's so much going there's on there's a lot of different things and it's going, going on. on right around us right yeah, and, and yeah. one thing that you know we, we tend to focus on especially as we get closer to summer when school lets out uh, you know a lot of folks uh, don't realize or some uh, and, and some do that a lot of folks drive up from atlanta every weekend to take advantage oh, of yes. what we have to offer in this area as far as mountain biking cycling uh -huh. river rafting, white water rafting yeah whatever you know and so we want to also open it up to recreational sports more uh -huh. so than, than just scholastic sports as well uh -huh. and so hopefully this new uh long format uh, will be, we'll be able to talk more about that, bring in mm -hmm. folks from our, uh, you know, recreational community as well to talk about some of the different things that are that we have going on. Have you been white water rafting? I have been. It's been a while, but yeah, we actually did a segment. Uh, you know, we actually the prep rally name may sound familiar to some people out there because we've actually done the prep rally before in the past, and then mm -hmm. it kind of became a seasonal thing mm -hmm. that we did, you know, during like football season for the coaches show. But way back when, a few years back, we actually did a segment on the old prep rally that was sort of a white water rafting mm -hmm. kind of segment, although it wasn't really rapid. We were going down, you know. Kusawati, you know, mm -hmm. car to and everything, but but I had been whitewater rafting. Well, we went whitewater rafting in Alaska, and and I had been on the Nantahala. Big big deal, right. you know, big deal. Sure. So we go to Alaska, and they put these outfits on us that come up to here, <laughs> and all that you see is this little fat face, and 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 the man who's given us the demonstration and the instruction, he says, ma'am. Please take that holy scared look off your face. <laughs> You're making the other people nervous. And I said, oh, I am nervous, you know. And I said, Why are we so enclosed in this? And and, and then I, and they show us their posi positioning people on the river with ropes. And I said, What are they there for? He said, Lady, if you go out of this thing, you've got about 20 seconds before you are history. And I said. Oh my goodness, so yeah. white water rafting has a lot of different aspects. The Nantahala is easy, sure, easy going. Sure, the Okoye is a little rougher. The Okoye is rough. Right. And, and isn't there one over in Dawson County that's even rougher? There's several that... That's like I said, there's, there's a few. I've been on the Okoye and the Nantahala. And of course, the Nantahala is like the Chattahoochee. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, yeah. relaxing. There's one little rough spot there, but... We hit it. Yeah. We actually threw two out there that day. There you go. There you go. But the, the yeah. Okoye is, is a little choppier, uh -huh, yeah, no doubt, uh -huh. no doubt. So, but, uh, you know, and... and and so we're, we're looking forward to being able to bring that stuff in. And, you know, it's really the timing of this show is, is really hitting it at a good time because we've got all this region and state basketball and wrestling going on right now. So we're coming in at a real strong time. That's why we're going an hour because we do have so much to talk about. As we get into spring, obviously, there's so many sports going on. We'll still mm -hmm. have a lot to talk about. But uh, right now with all the basketball and with all the wrestling going on, uh, there's there's no no problem in filling an hour right mm -hmm. now. Right. And, you know, the thing people love, mm -hmm. and, and you know that opening day when you – show all the little children. Right. 
folks love seeing that. Absolutely, you know, and that's coming up. That's coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's uh, coming up. Gilmer County starting early this year. March 15th is their opening day. Uh, uh, Pickens and, and uh, Fannin and Basin will follow that. In fact, Fannin and Basin are, are really right on the heels of that. And um, registration is going on right now, too, by the way, in Fannin County for softball. So that's a special time of year. It's, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to get the, the young kids on, the little kids, because that's one thing we want to do, too, is reach out not only to our high school kids and and middle school and so forth, but also to the youth, mm -hmm, uh, the little mm -hmm. kids as well. And that that's really serves as a great opportunity for us to get all those kids on. So. That's right, right. I hope people will tune in. Now, this is what we'll give them, two hours of us. Then they get a little bathroom break. Then right. they get to put a little laundry in the washer. They get to maybe put it in the dryer. Then sit down and hang out with Dave. Now, who's, is Chad going to help you? Chad Luther is my co-host, and uh, we, we actually did a little run through yesterday and had a lot of fun with it. So we're excited about uh, what, what the actual live show will produce today here in a little while, in a, a little less than an hour. <laughs> but uh, but it, I think it'll I think it'll be a lot of fun, and, and hopefully the viewers will in, enjoy it. And it's uh, kind of sports and entertainment related. If there's mm -hmm. a good sports movie that comes out, we want to talk about that as well. So hopefully we're going to open it up to a big audience, and uh, mm -hmm. we uh, encourage people to tune on in, call in, uh, what have you. And even Watch pictures it. of your athletes yeah. who might be featured in something that you might not know about because sure. you're pretty dang smart but you may not know it all that way uh, and I don't oh my trust goodness. me trust me I'll be the first to tell you that so uh, yeah any anything yeah. you got share for us, let your us sport know. stories with sure. him and, and you know I didn't know that people really do race motocross bicycles and right. a friend told me they came up here one weekend and he said have you ever heard of motocross bicycle and I said no and he said well we had a grandkid who did that sure. and I thought well didn't know that still happened right, so right. And water skiing, aren't there some water skiing places here? Water skiing, yes, uh, Whitestone Lakes played host to the Southern Regionals the last couple of years. I know mm -hmm. I talked to a, a gentleman the other day with a new business in town that's starting up a, a, a new skiing event that's going to take place in June, and we're going to hopefully have him on our show as we get closer to that. So, yeah, water sports are rapidly becoming mm -hmm. very popular with Lake Blue Ridge, Carter's Lake, and, of mm -hmm. course, the Twin Lakes down at Whitestone. Right, right. Well, loved having you here. Thank I, you. I look forward Thanks to for this. Me. It's going to be fun. Now we're going to go to Neighbor Spotlight and y'all hang around at 1030, take your little break, get you a little <laughs> cup of coffee, but we're going to go right now to Neighbor Spotlight. You'll enjoy this one. Each week on North Georgia Now Today, we like to focus on individuals and groups that make our communities unique. This week we met with a director and volunteer to the Pickens County Pregnancy Center to learn more about their upcoming fundraiser. Well, um, the Pregnancy Center was founded in 1990, I believe it was 1991, and started out very small and grew over the years until we came to this location uh, here on Highway 53. And um, we, our, our purpose is to serve young women who are in a crisis pregnancy. And a crisis pregnancy is basically any pregnancy that was not planned and create, and there may be problems in the situation. There may not be a father present. There may be um, uh, marital problems, or uh, it may just be a bad time in the young woman's life to be having a baby. So we try to give an alternative to abortion here. We're a Christian ministry, and we uh, counsel the young women who come in our door and t uh, teach them that they have other options besides abortion. The Pregnancy Center offers a number of services to young mothers and their children. Some of these services are practical, such as providing diapers. Others are a little more abstract, but are still very useful. Well, the services that we provide to the pregnant moms, we have two main services that we have. One is called Earn While You Learn, which is a service where they, uh, we set up a program of education for them, and they come in on their own time and they do classes watch videos, do homework, and uh, learn about their pregnancy and um, about raising children and parenting and all the things that they need to know so that their children get a good start in life. And they earn baby bucks doing that. And those baby bucks they can spend in our clothes closet, which is uh, we have a um, children's clothing from infant right up to size three toddler. We have maternity clothes. We have. Um, all kinds of things. We have cribs when they're donated to us. That's all used uh, materials, and those are donated by communities, people in the community, and churches. And then we have another ministry called our di diaper bag outreach, where we um, ha give the girls a diaper bag, a brand new diaper bag, and we keep it here at the pregnancy center. And when each time they come in to do one of our other services, which is like um, doing the earn while you learn 
having an ultrasound, which we provide once a month, um, doing childbirth preparation classes or a Bible study, they get to add a brand new item from our mommy store into the diaper bag. So by the time they have their baby, they have a diaper bag that's just overflowing with layette items for the baby, and that's all new things. So um, it, it's the girls really like that. You know, that's a real encouragement for them to come in and do our other services. In order to keep projects like the mommy store going, the pregnancy center needs funding, and that's where you come in. If you have a sweet tooth, this fundraiser may be a great fit for you. Well, on Thursday, February 28th, we'll be holding a Valentine dessert auction. It will be at the Sharp Mountain Grill. It will be at 7 in the evening. For those who are bringing desserts, they want to arrive about 6.30. And this pie plate here is one of the dessert items that will be there that night, only it will be filled. <laughs> and this particular pie holds four quarts of homemade cherry pie or apple, whatever we're going to use in it. This particular event, we're going to have cherry pear. And uh, we have auctioned this off in years past. And because everybody wants the pie, we have cut it in quarters. And it's auctioned off at $100 a quarter. So this particular pie has brought in about $400. So usually, it's a very successful night. Everyone understands the purpose is to raise money for the center. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the fun things that we're doing, too, is we have a, we have a, uh, I think, aren't we going to have a band, Carolyn? We're, we're going to have, have a band, so yeah. we're going to have music. It's going to be a fun evening to raise money for the center. And uh, something that we just uh, figured out just the other day um, is that we're going to have a, a grand prize, a drawing at the end of the evening. So uh, everybody who makes a, a purchase uh, and consequently gives their dollars to support the pregnancy center. For every $10 they spend, they'll get a ticket. And at the end of the evening, we're going to draw one winner with those tickets, and that person will win a one-week trip to Kiowa Island, South Carolina, to a cottage at Kiowa Island, which is a really nice prize. So we hope that that will draw more people to come to the pregnancy center uh, fundraiser and um, bid well <laughs> for the desserts. Yeah, and the final thing that's fun is following the evening, once the bidding is done, we're going to ask, invite folks to share their, some of their desserts that night and have coffee and tea. So you can go around and we'll have a dessert buffet. So it should be a lot of fun. We've got some great items planned, nice items that are being donated. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have some diabetic items for people who are cautious about their sugar. So that will be nice. There'll be fudgy brownies and some chocolate muffins and... Some of the bakeries in town are going to be donating items, so um, there'll have be really good things from them. And um, it should be a, a fun night. Churches and other civic organizations are joining together to help this worthy cause. If your area church would like to help, there's still time to get involved. Well, I'm part of a new church work here in the Jasper Pickens area, First Presbyterian Church of Jasper. And it's very important for us to be identified with uh, supporting life. And we believe in faith and practice. And just because we believe in life isn't enough for us. We believe we have to have some practical form of support. And my background is professional fundraising. And we've run fundraisers in the past for the Pregnancy Center in Cherokee County, where we're from. Mm -hmm. And it was very successful with one church. We raised about 3000 uh, probably $2,000 uh, from one church. And I thought, well, perhaps here in Pickens County, if we could engage other churches to support this event, it could be a much larger fundraiser, more successful. Mm -hmm. And we have been very successful at bringing in other churches. We have 11 churches now on board that are supporting this event. And that's through uh, gifts of money, and that's through volunteers to make desserts, and uh, volunteers and people that are going to come and bid generously. So we're really pleased at the support we've received. I believe the money that has been raised right now before the event has even begun is something under $4,000. So it's been very successful, and we haven't held the event yet. <laughs> so we're very proud of the support that we're getting here in the county. Mm -hmm. 
If you are interested in being a part of the dessert auction on February 28th, give Mrs. Cosby a call at 770-735-3521. After all, every little bit helps. One of the things that we've seen in recent months is that the need for the pregnancy center has practically doubled, if not more than, more than doubled. We have had twice as many young women coming to us for our services than we had in the first, I've, I've been the director for four years and um, the first two or three years I was here that uh, we didn't have nearly as many as we have coming now. So there's obviously a big need. There's a lot of uh, teen pregnancy in the community. Um, there's always uh, the option for young women to choose abortion and we exist to give them another option. And we are a ministry, a Christian ministry, so we do witness to the young women who come in here, and we build relationships with them. We um, hope that they will come back on a continuing basis, and many of them do. Many of them, we develop such a good rapport with them that they continue coming back e with their children to visit, even though they, they're not really eligible for our services anymore. So. Um, building relationships, providing the service for the young women in the community who are in a, a pregnancy that is creating a lot of problems for them in their life. We serve as a support ministry for them to give them a place to come to solve the, help them solve the problems that they have going on in their lives during the pregnancy and the first years of their baby's lives. Wow. Darren, almost seven weeks have gone by. I can't believe how fast time has flown. Yes, and you know, I love your emails. I love when people stop me in restaurants and talk to me. This is great. We have a sweet little email that Rena Kirk sent. She said, Irene Free and Mary Fowler from Talking Rock had stopped in the office in Jasper and were really bragging on the show. They said it was so enjoyable to sit down and listen to local people talk about local things. And that's what we're about. So we want you to share your stories with us. Tell us what your neighbors are doing that's unusual. You know, we've had some great adoption stories on and, and, and so many success stories with adoption. And, and we're going to have another one, uh, a young family who adopted an autistic child. So, so many stories and so many great people in the communities that we serve. And, you know, we are about serving you. So we right. want you to share your stories with us. I have a lady who's going to be on next week. I met at a singing. She loaned me a handkerchief. She called into the program. She's been playing the piano in her church for 61 years. That says a lot for that lady, doesn't it? Good night. That says a lot for that lady. Now, Darren, I love when you get to come to town. I know you're dead tired. You had two hours sleep last night. You've got the crud, but you're going to try to make it tonight to sing. Y'all will be in Rome, Georgia. Rome, Georgia. Municipal Auditorium. Municipal Auditorium. If you can make it, please come. It's, it's probably about an hour away from here. About an hour, yeah. And uh, we're, we're excited about singing. You know, every time we get on stage, it's, it's, it's about the Lord. That's right. And we try to encourage people. Uh, one of our biggest songs right now is If You Only Knew, and it talks about dealing with uh, the loss of a loved one that's going on to glory, going on to heaven. Uh -huh. And, uh, I mean, if we knew what heaven was like, you know, we wouldn't be, the song says, we wouldn't be grieving for them. Uh -huh. that's I mean, because right. it's so perfect there. That's right. And so it's a touch to a lot of people, and, and I, I love singing the songs that, that, that the inspiration sing because uh, it's just real songs. It's, uh -huh. it's, uh, it hits people at home, just mm -hmm. like this show. It, right. it deals with, with the home. The and, real and deal. Yeah, it is the real, the real deal, deal whether, whether it be talking about Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or things that affect everybody. And it does affect everybody. And, you know, I'm going to go to Grandview Nursing Center and see Miss Betty Ann Roper because her daughter called me yesterday. She's a Superior Court judge in Atlanta, and she said, you've got to go see my mom. She said, I heard you talking to Miss Mercier, who is her aunt, and, and she told me that it was her birthday today. And she said, you will be so delighted to see my mom. Now, her mom can't walk anymore, and she's bedridden. But she said, my mom will treat you like you have come to dinner or to a tea. And I thought, that is going to be so precious. So I told Beth that I would go by and see her mom. And, you know, guys, check in on the elderly. You know, like middle... Grace Kaler, you were there at Salem too. You saw her stand up saying, did you know oh, she's been in the hospital this week? Really? She's been in the hospital, but I think she's out now. What a blessing she oh, is. That was and a I told our I told Annie Hensley, we missed an opportunity of a lifetime. That church had people sitting on the altar. They had them sitting in the aisles. They had them lined up against the wall. And Miss Grace stepped on stage and sang. What did she sing? Uh, she sang um 
elderly moment, senior yeah, moment. I had a senior ship moment. Of Zion. It was the ship of Zion, and she did an excellent job. It was and, amazing. And I mean, I, I was shouting and, and praising the did. Lord because he did. He did. it was, you know, for her to get up at, at her age and and and. And just do you remember what song. she said? I just came as I was. I just came as I we was. We want you to come as you are. We want you to sit down, relax, get comfortable with us. Friday is. Comfy Friday, so I don't know what I'm going to wear tomorrow, but I'm going to be comfortable, and come, I want y'all to be comfortable. Come as you are, but we hope that you leave different. That's uh, right. You know, there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of churches going to the come as you are. And in our church, we won't, you know, we don't expect uh, people, lost people or people that don't know a lot about church to come in and, and be super Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, we want you to come as you are, but we want you to leave changed. That's right. And that's what it's about. That's right. That's what it's about. And, and ETC3 is about you. And including Dave Garner's new program that's going to yep. be at 11 o'clock. And I encourage y'all to keep tuning in. Tune in to us. Take you a little break. Get you a little coffee. Do a little laundry. And then tune back in to Dave. So uh, we are about you. And we're about your community. And I can't wait to go back to Ducktown because that's a precious little town. Oh, man. You weren't with Brother Matt when he got lost up there. But Melton was. And they got to take, they will, took a tour of Ducktown and Turtletown. I was with them. Oh, you were. Okay. In the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good time. Okay. Well, you know, this has been fun, and I love it, and I'm so glad you took the time to come down. Appreciate you preached you last night, then you yeah. drove down, and I got here about 420 this morning. Got straight in the bed, tired. Got straight in the bed. I woke him up at 10 after 7, and he's like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but we're here and uh, enjoy being here every day, and, and thank you for your words of encouragement because the encouraging words make, make this job what it is today, a blessing. Now, from North Georgia Now Today, I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Darren Osborne. We hate to say goodbye, so we'll say see you later, see only you later. on ETC3.